Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I happen to get my hands on a Fire Slayer Dwarf. Now this is something from someone else. I asked for one and they gave it to me to paint. I'm gonna give it back once I'm done. They've already done the base so I have no idea how to do that. And so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up off where they left off and finish this model. Now I don't, I didn't, haven't done any of the assembly, the priming or anything like that so I wouldn't have started this way and I definitely would not have attached it to the base because that's, yes, it's, it's, I have to take a lot more time being careful around the feet. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to first assemble up to the point where it gets in the way of painting and I want the hands attached. And then I'm going to take my razor knife and I'm going to finish uh, cleaning up some parts of the model just, just were not done right. And then we're going to move on from there. Now moving on to the flesh, I'm going to use the colors Reichlin Flesh Shade, Cadian Flesh Tone, and then at the very end a highlight of Kislev Flesh mixed in. Now this is going to be good practice for eventually for my Blight Kings, but essentially what's going to happen here is I'm going to start off by covering up with Cadian Flesh Tone all the parts of the body that I've scraped off, and I'm going to paint the whole model with it except for like the folds of the skin where any folds would happen. Afterwards, I'm going to go back over with Reichlin Flesh Shade all over all the model. And then once that is done, and I'm going to go back to Cadian Flesh Tone and then highlight all the spaces apart from the folds and the recesses. Now before I get to the Kislev Flesh step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with another coat of Reichland Flesh Shade, watered down with technical contrast medium. Now normally you wouldn't use contrast medium, there's a Lamian medium that's used, but due to the plague I haven't been able to go to the Games Workshop store and I can't pick up my own, so I'm stuck with it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute the Reichland Flesh Shade with the contrast medium so it has less of an impact and then I'll recoat the whole model with it adding another layer of depth. I will then go back over with Cadian Flesh Tone again for a further highlight on the more raised areas. And then once that is done, I will then mix a little bit of Kisla Flesh with the Cadian Flesh Tone. Maybe like two parts Cadian, one part Kislev, and I will use this as a fine highlight on the very edges of the muscles and the raised areas. I want it to be very slight. Very, uh, I don't want it to cover the model, I just want it to be on the very edges.
Now using Balthazar Gold, there's a bunch of like metal ruins in his flesh. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to coat them all. I'm going to be very careful to not ruin all the work I've just done and paint the Balthazar Gold on all these rune symbols on his body. Now using Mornfang Brown and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint a lot of depth and shadow on all his, on his well, loincloth flaps thingies. So how is this is going to work is we're going to start with a base layer of Mornfang Brown. And once that dries, we are going to then take Agrax Earthshade and then paint the whole thing. Then once that dries, we're going to go back with Mornfang Brown again, and we're going to highlight the raised areas and the edges. Once that's done, we're going to go back to Agrax Earthshade again, adding another layer of it. Then we're going to go back to Mornfang Brown again. And then we're going to highlight it further, the more raised areas and the high edges. Using these two paints, or using a paint and a wash back and forth, I know Citadel calls this a shade, is an easy way to get a lot of depth and color with just using two paints. Now with Mornfang Brown and XV88, it's a sandy color, I'm going to mix them in a 1 to 1 ratio and I'm going to use this for the final highlight on all the loincloth stuff. Put it on the highest, most raised areas and along the highest raised edges or wherever you want and to have it really pop out. And now we're going to do the hair. We're going to start off with a base coat of Mephiston Red, then a dry brush of Evil Sun Scarlet, and then a final dry brush of Bestigore Flesh on the upper raised areas. And then we're going to give it a wash of Griffin Cephia. Now for the dry brushing, we're going to use a much smaller, more precise brush. This is going to make it take a lot longer, but because there's so many fine, I guess you could say hair fibers on the model, now we need a smaller precise brush for this, so this will take a while to do, but you'll be able to see it done at high speed. But this actually took a very long time to do on both inside and out on both of these giant mohawks. Going back to Balthazar Gold, we will dilute it with water enough that it becomes a little bit translucent and then we'll use this to coat all the bronze areas or bronze armor on the helmet, on the body, and such and such. Now when it's translucent enough, it'll allow the highlights and raised areas of the undercoats to show through. So by doing it this way, it's actually naturally going to highlight and add depth and shadow onto the model without me having to do anything.
Now using lead belcher, we're going to use this water down just like the Balthazar gold and we're going to paint all the metal parts of all the axes, the tiny little throwing axes and such and such. And now using some Agrax Earthshade, I'm going to apply this to all the brass and the metal. With the tiny little hammer and stuff, it's going to take a few coats because I can only do one side at a time since it's not attached to anything. But apart from that, I just apply it all over. I start going to a final assembly. Using super glue and placing it sparingly, I now attach all the parts of his body together. His beard, his face, his head. However, I had a lot of trouble with the helmet to get on. I should have dry fit it a bit more, or maybe I should have had it attached first and just painted around it, because I'm not able to fully connect it correctly. I then proceed to varnish the whole model with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. Now this will completely uh, tone down or remove all the shine from metallics, so we'll have to deal with that in a moment. Now using Balthazar Gold, Lead Belcher, and Iron Breaker, I'm going to use this to spruce up the model and add the shine back to the metals. Now starting with Balthazar Gold, I'm going to use this and I'm going to paint all the like big flat areas of the brass and I'm just going to go over all the edges and the highlights and add the shine back to it. Then I'm going to take Balthazar Gold and I'm going to dry brush it back onto the helmet to get that shine on raised areas. Once that is done, I'm going to take Lead Belcher and then I'm going to well, paint all the open areas of the metal. I'm not going to focus too hard on the edges, but uh, this will bring back a lot of the shine.
And then finally using Iron Breaker, I'm going to use it to highlight the very edges of the metal. Basically the razor edges of the axes and other places that I want the highlight to be, like raised areas or anything that's higher up. And with that, the model is finished. Not bad for a Fire Slayer. Now this was a very good opportunity to once again work on flesh for my future Blight Kings. Now the only big well, failure on my part is not being able to connect the helmet together. You can see the split right in the middle of the head. But apart from that, the flesh looks really good. The brass stands out. The metal stands out. Every part of it is clear and distinct. There is detail everywhere. The hair looks great. Yeah, I mean... Every part of the model you can clearly tell what it is, it's bright, there's depth where there needs to be, there's shadow where there needs to be. This took around maybe four, four and a half hours to do, but most of it was just thinking what to do next to try to figure out the painting. Now if you have it down, this could probably be done in like around three, maybe three and a half hours per model if you're doing batch. But overall, I'm proud of what I did and I would give myself Overall, an 8 out of 10. What holds it back is clearly the assembly of the helmet, and mm, I guess the axes. I couldn't fully take, uh, I actually don't have the paints to paint like a fire or bright light coming from the axes because those are braziers. <laughs> Do that because I actually just don't have the paints. The plague needs to let up. I need to go back to Games Workshop. I am running low. Well, anyway, if you liked the video, press like. If not, you know, the dislike button is right there. My next project coming up is the Blight Kings themselves, finally.